Hello, El Ruderai Fermentation Community. Thank you all for the comments on my last videos. I really appreciate it. Since making that video about three weeks ago, I have tried several batches, some of them successful and some of them not. But as you can see here, contamination has got me again. So once again, my mind goes into troubleshooting mode. I began thinking, what could be the possible variations in my fermentation process? A big one that comes to mind is sterilizing my half and half milk before using. Now this involves heating up to around 190 degrees Fahrenheit for roughly 20 minutes. This is something that I am trying to avoid doing at all costs. I've tried it several times and it is very time consuming, it is very messy, and I just, I'm not convinced that it adds anything to the overall process. Now shown on the screen here is what a recent contaminated batch looks like. As you can see, separation has happened. Curds have floated to the top and way at the bottom. Now some may argue that this actually is okay, but I'm here to tell you it is not. Separation like this indicates the presence of a rogue bacteria, yeast, or spore. We are not making traditional yogurt or skier. We are growing a single strand of bacteria inside of a dairy product for consumption. Now here is what a successful batch should look like. There should be no separation, no off smells or discoloration. It should be thick and creamy with a smooth texture. I would describe the taste as a cross between Greek yogurt and sour cream. Now I'd like to share some thoughts on this comment I received. I'm the guy that brought Steramine to Reddit. I strongly recommend you heat your milk to 190F for 20 minutes. I take up to an hour to reach the temp, monitoring with a wireless barbecue thermometer. I suspect Davis is trying to make his formula appear simple to avoid scaring the newbies. Same with sanitation. Love seeing my inverted 6 ounce pot, so far 80 of them are identical and each is a perfect dose. If the outcome isn't perfect, it's garbage. You don't know what else is growing in the jar competing with the El Ruderai and causing the swamp thing. Forgot to mention, do you really think Inulin, possibly processed in some rat infested third world country is sterile? Ha ha. This is why it's critical to run it into the milk around 150F. Good job, but edit in some heating. It is not optional. UHT is not sterile and can contain bacteria. If the milk is kept unrefrigerated with expiry in years, it's sterile packed, if not future swamp thing. Now there's a lot to unpack with this comment. The first thing I'd like to address is whether or not the milk needs to be heated to 190 degrees for 20 minutes. I've tried this technique several times and I'm just not convinced that it's worth doing. Granted, I have received contamination on several of my batches. So there could be a strong argument behind this, that heating the milk actually is beneficial to creating a more consistent process and achieving a consistent result. But something happened to me. I was at Costco about a week ago and I walked into the freezer to buy some eggs and lo and behold right in front of me stood a bottle of organic half and half milk and as soon as I saw this the light bulb went off in my head. Now this milk is packaged inside of a plastic bottle. Now on the surface you may not think that there would be much of a difference here. But I believe that the milk packaged in the plastic bottle is a lot more sterile than the one packaged in the paper carton. Plastic bottles are made from materials which are non-porous and provide a strong barrier against contamination. In contrast, paper cartons are coated with layers of plastic or wax, which can sometimes develop tiny imperfections during production or use, potentially allowing exposure to contaminants. The production process for plastic bottles often includes sterilization steps such as heat or chemical treatments before filling. While paper cartons are also sanitized and filled in clean environments, the process can be more prone to contamination at certain stages. Plastic bottles typically have tighter, more reliable seals compared to paper cartons. The screw caps or seal tops on plastic bottles are better at keeping out air and microorganisms once the bottle is enclosed. So to summarize all that, I believe one of the main variabilities in my process is the milk I'm using. Since switching to plastic bottles, I have not had a contaminated batch, and I'm really hoping that this continues. Please realize that my sample size is very small. I'm just some guy off the internet that's trying to make this stuff. 
So if anyone out there has any experience with this, please leave me a comment. I would love to discuss this and I'm trying to learn more. The other variability in my process is the inulin that I'm using. Now Dr. Davis says to use two tablespoons of inulin and he basically just says just put it in there and stir it in. Going back to what my commenter was saying, inulin is processed in a rat infested third world country. In other words, inulin could be just as unsterile as the milk you are using. I've got some ideas on how to sterilize this inulin and I think I'm going to touch on it in a future video. I've also been reading some reports that inulin may not be the best food for this bacteria. This bacteria eats simple sugars and inulin isn't a simple sugar. Now, I'm still kind of digesting what everyone is saying about this. I'm going to do some more research on this and hopefully present it in another video. Thanks for watching, everyone.